Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm an application engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Partic 3D has a variety of scanners for all types of size ranges and shapes. Their handheld scanners are amazing at tracking most objects, but what if you need to scan a very large object, such as a train or maybe even an entire warehouse? For these situations, LiDAR scanners are more commonly used, a form of time of flight scanner that uses lasers to measure the distance of objects. The Arctic Ray is one such device. Sitting on either a tripod or a flat surface, it will shoot out multiple laser lines while it spins, gathering data and information in all the surrounding areas up to 210 meters away. It then processes this raw data and converts it into points within Arctic Studio for you to create a final mesh with. LiDAR scanning is different than other forms of scanning since it's mostly hands-off. In this video, I'll go over the basics of setting up the ray to create a scan. With the ray, there's actually two ways of gathering and storing the data depending on your needs. The first method we'll go over is hooking the ray up to a computer, and the other is using the Artex phone app to connect to the ray and store information on an SD card. If you turn on the ray while plugged into a computer, you'll see an option appear inside of Artex Studio to scan with the ray. This means that the scan data will automatically be converted to points within Artex Studio for you to save in a desired folder. Inside this new scan window, you're met with a variety of options on how the data will be gathered. I typically will enable the advanced options for my scans. These settings can be changed before or after running a preview. They only affect the data gathered while performing a scan. When you click preview, the scanner will do a quick 360 scan to display in a preview window what it sees. This is helpful to know if the object you want to scan is properly in view. You can even go and select individual areas of the scan to save time. Point density is the level of detail that the raw data will be in both longitude and latitude. Increasing this will give you a higher quality data, but increase the amount of scan time and size of the file. The distance slider removes any data beyond a designated value in relation to where the scanner is. This helps save some time with processing the raw data if you scanned outside. Sensitivity affects the amount of noise filtered during the scanning. If you're scanning an object that's close to the scanner, you might want to lower this whereas farther objects like pipes or even a ceiling fan need as much data as possible to generate the mesh, so setting this higher can help. The target settings are so Arctic Studio can designate what types of targets to look for while processing the raw data. My preferred type of target to use are the checkerboard style, but spheres are easier to see at a farther distance. This can save time during the global registration process, since you can align based off of targets. If you are in a busy shop floor, you may want to enable the sound option, which causes the ray to make a noise while scanning. Tilt correction helps with uneven floors, resetting the center of axis of the data so everything comes in at the proper orientation. Both of these settings, however, are pretty optional and I tend to rarely use them. Texture, however, can be more useful for some situations. The ray will do a quick scan of the surrounding areas using the two color cameras in the front before re-scanning the space with the laser. This color is then applied to the raw data to help with alignments, but it can't be used to add color to your mesh. We can also see distances of the object in this preview to help with that distance slider. This preview is optional. You can click scan right after going into the ray settings to start a 360 scan. However, it's recommended to run a preview to ensure you're in the right location to gather the data you want. I'm going to select a few sections of this preview and then run a scan so we can see how only the designated areas are gathered. The estimated time will be adjusted as we select these individual areas and the data will keep their alignments based off of their positions in the relative space. Once the scan finishes, our raw data will be automatically converted to a mesh preview, which we see inside of Artex Studio. Now our points are visible, and we can start manipulating the data like any other scans inside of the software. I prefer to switch to the display to scan color which gives me a better idea of how the data looks and the final mesh will appear. After the sections are scanned, I did do a 360 scan on the phone app. We can see how these individual sections match to the 3D scan positions once we brought it in. The data is saved onto an SD card inside of the ray. To transfer to Artex Studio, I simply plug the SD card into my system and import the .c3d file into my current project. The settings on the Ray app are very similar to the desktop one, and we can still select sections we desire. We can now start processing our data points to generate a final mesh that we can export out. With that, our scanning is done. In the second part of this video, I'll go over how to align Ray data together, generate a mesh from points, and even combine the Ray with other Artex scanners to create high-quality sections of our final mesh. 
I hope you find this video helpful. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos on Artec Studio, scanners, and other engineering softwares. Mm -hmm.